Hello, welcome back to the Cubase Fundamentals course in which we're writing a song called Project One and in the course of doing so we're going to learn pretty much all about Cubase. Now then, today is um, a red letter day because we're going to record our first audio but before we crack on with that there's a few um, housekeeping items I want to take care of and the first one is in this recorded piece. So this is our drum line and I noticed the other day that we have a rogue note. Right at the very end of the bar, we got this tiny note. Now this will be because it was looping around and this is something that the, the drum pattern, because it's not playing notes absolutely on the, on the beat, on the line, if the note is very, very slightly before the beat and we cut it short, then we're left with one of these tiny notes. Now there are two ways that we can get around this. The easiest one is to select it and press delete. <laughs> That's pretty easy. I'll just control Z to take it away. But I'm gonna use this as an excuse to do our first um, little bit of logical editing. Now, I really like the logical editor. I use it a lot, but it, it can appear to be intimidating. If we get into it right from the very beginning and it becomes just a part of our DNA, then it won't seem quite so intimidating. So it's in the MIDI menu, logical editor, and here it is. And this is a means by which we can perform um, logic-based processing on our MIDI data. Now I've got lots of stuff in my logical editor page, but we're going to take this one step at a time. It's the subject of many discussions to get into the logical editor, and a lot of the stuff we're not going to need until we've got more advanced um, functions under our fingers. So for now, let's just keep it nice and simple. There's going to be some sort of initial um, settings that you can select and that just gets us back to a, a really simple view. And what we've got is at the, at the top of the window, this is a set of conditions that we can specify that when they're satisfied, something happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to specify a rule that says when we've got really, really small notes, um, just delete them. So at the top we can see we've got some default values. We've got if the type is equal to a note, and then we've got um, the opportunity to add new conditions. So click the plus symbol and then the word and appears. And the length is less than, and we're gonna set it to 12 pulses per quarter note. We dealt with these um, previously. These are really tiny slices of sound. So 12 um, PPQ or ticks is one tenth of a sixteenth note, it's really small. So if any of the notes in our currently selected part meet these conditions, then we get to specify something that's going to happen. And in the window below, we can choose delete as the operation that's gonna happen. And now if I just hold control down and zoom out so that we can see more of this part and click apply, you'll see this note disappear and there it goes. So that's just our first introduction to Logical Editor. Now I actually have this um, saved as a preset. You see delete tiny notes, I'll just select that. And that, it's more or less the same function. I've actually got less or equal as you can see. And so if you want to go to the little save preset, store preset option at the top and click the little plus button then it will give you an opportunity to record or save this logical editor preset, delete tiny notes, say OK, and then you'll have it in your collection when we need it later. Okay, that's uh, housekeeping step number one. The next thing we're going to do is divide our track list into song tracks and non-song tracks. We're going to get to this from the project window and I want you to just select divide track list. I think this is essential and should be on by default. It's completely superb. So we've now basically got two different track lists and we can put anything we want in either of these. We're gonna store what's called metadata in the top list. Stuff that doesn't contain actual song information itself, but is really important to the successful management of the song. And one of the things that we've got is this stereo out track. If we have a look at our mix console, here is our stereo out track. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this folder up 
I'm going to drag it into the top list. And now all of our music data is in the bottom and all of our other stuff is up here. The next bit of housekeeping that I want to do is to do a little bit of work, uh, just one setting on the, on the mixer down below, because I like to have my inputs uh, fixed to the left hand side of my mix console. I like to have my outputs fixed to the right hand side and everything else in between. So the way that we do that is in the this inspector page at the top, if you click visibility and then kind of weirdly go down to the, the bottom, um, this tabs at the top and bottom of this page, click zones and now we can specify that we have our inputs on the left hand side and our outputs on the right hand side. So now it doesn't matter how wide, how many tracks we've got in the middle, we'll always be able to see this stuff. And finally, I need to fix something that I hadn't actually noticed was wrong. Stereo guitar in is an input I very rarely use. And it's actually a function of me having the wrong audio config for this project. If we head up into audio connections, I actually have a preset saved that gets my mono guitar um, on the input. And that's the only um, standard default input that I have. So if I select Anthony's control room IO, the sound always drops out on me when I do stuff like that and I'm in the middle of talking. But basically there we, you can see now that I've just got mono guitar in on the left hand side. So these presets are really easy to manage. You've got your save preset option down here. So when you've specified your inputs, and we did that in the very first episode when we set up our, um, our basic configuration, uh, you can save all of this stuff. For outputs, I have an Anthony's empty output. So if you're using the control room, you actually disengage your your standard output. It's um, I'd rather it wasn't this way, but it is. And here, as we can see, this is a little bit much for us to go into right now, but it is actually my standard setup. I'll just select this to make sure and turn my microphone back on. So let's not worry about the control room just for now. That's way beyond what we need to know at the moment. The most important thing is input on the left, output on the right. That's what we want to see. And finally, one last thing before we record our, um, our audio part. I'm going to record some guitar today. I'm going to pick this part up and I'm going to move it forwards four bars. Now, the reason will become clear later when we get on to processing our audio files but basically I recommend that the beginning of your song is never at one, never at the beginning of the project. Always give yourself some headroom and I tend to work on four bars, sometimes eight. Like I say, for reasons that we'll go into, um, let's not just overwhelm ourselves right now. And we're good to go. Let's click the plus button. We're gonna choose an audio track. My audio inputs are going to be my mono guitar in. Configuration is stereo. That's an enormous conversation that we'll have another time. I wanna just get on and record the audio for now, but just leave it as stereo for now. Audio outputs is also going to be stereo and we'll call it um, guitar chord one. Because I had stereo output track as the, the last selected thing, this is where it's dropped my audio. Should really have selected the um the midi part and then it would have put it where i actually wanted it but here's my audio track and now we're going to record some guitars okay then so what we're going to do is record a four bar um guitar part with broken arpeggios and can you hear <clears throat> you can't hear my guitar at the moment that's because we don't have monitoring enabled so i'll press the little orange loudspeaker button to, just to the right of record <laughs> Now I can hear myself play. When I press record, I'll mute the mic so that it's a little bit distracting to have the sound of the guitar going into the microphone, so I'll mute that. I'm gonna press record, make a couple of deliberate mistakes on the first pass for reasons that we'll see later, and then I'll try to catch it on the second.
Not the best plane there ever was, but it'll do. Hello, back again. Okay, so let's have a, a review of what's just happened. We've recorded our audio data in. You saw me just at the end of that um, that live cut. And I turned the monitor off. If you've still got monitor on, I'll just get this song playing. Just turn the volume down a little bit. You won't be able to hear the guitar part. So while you're monitor monitoring it, you can hear live, but you can't hear recorded. There it is. Now let's have a look at what just happened then because we recorded two takes. So where is the second take? Well, if you look really carefully, you can see there are some kind of hash lines on this, um, on this guitar part here. That means there are multiple takes. And if we press our little show lanes button, we can see them. If you can't see this button, right click track control settings and it's lane display type. I remove it, the button disappears, add it back in. So this is what enables us to see all of our various takes and in the next episode we'll get into this and start looking at how we um, get into processing audio a little bit. But for now just be aware that it's there and these um, hash lines as I say are telling you that there are multiple takes. You can only ever hear one copy of audio at any given moment in time and that's going to be super important when we get on to processing audio as you'll see. But for now I think that's a good place to stop. We've recorded our first audio part. If you want to head over to my um, Patreon page you'll be able to download this project and its ever accumulating collection of stuff that goes along with it. We've got audio files now. Um, and if you enjoyed the video please hit like. It really helps me out with the YouTube stuff. See you for the next episode. Thanks a lot.